Well, good morning and welcome to KMC. My name is Travis Capcha. I'm the associate pastor here, and we're glad that you're joining us this Sunday morning on this snowy Valentine's Day. We've got a few announcements for you, so let's just hop right into them. First, we'd just like to continue to thank you for your tithes and offerings throughout this uh, time. And if you just want to head over to kzumc.org, uh, you'll find a place to do that there or the boxes in the back. Secondly, if you want to like and share this video, whether you're watching now online or later um, after service, if the more people that like and share, the more people we can get this to, um, and we continue to uh, just advance the kingdom, and it's, it's really awesome, and we thank you for what you've already done. If you also want to head over to our YouTube page, I think we're at seven subscribers right now. If we can get that up, um, the more subscribers we have, the more cool things we can do with that platform, and I'm excited for what God's going to do over there on YouTube. So just type in Kalamazoo Missionary Church in the search bar. You should find it and just hit the little red subscribe button. That'd be awesome. In other announcements, we have youth tonight from 5 to 6.30. We're continuing our series on prayer. So if you're from 6th to 12th grade, we pray that you join us here from 5 to 6.30. 6.30 on this Wednesday, we're having an Ash Wednesday service here at the church. It's a time of reflection, but also to get our spirits uh, focused and in the right path in this Lenten season. So we pray that you join us here again at 6.30. And then next Sunday, the 21st after service, we have a family meeting of sorts. We pray that you guys uh, join us and engage with us as we uh, vote on James to be an elder and also look at the financial situation of the church and talk about um, money in that way. We get, and just pray that you join us after service next Sunday, the 21st. Well, we're starting something, starting something. It is a one-off Sunday. Um, this is going to be something we do throughout the year, three, four times when we have like a, a one Sunday by itself, and we're going to call them Psalm Sundays. So we're going to be looking at Psalms on these random Sundays, and today we're going to be in Psalm 130. I pray that you hear from God here this morning. All right, well, good morning, everyone. Well, welcome to Kalamazoo Missionary Church. We are glad that you are here with us today. My name is Joel. I'm one of the pastors here, uh, and uh, we're thankful that you're all here in-house in joining us this morning. We're thankful to those who are at home watching us online that you're with us as well. Thank you so much for making a part of making us a part of your morning. We know that you have a lot of options as far as how to worship God in our community, and we appreciate that you've chosen uh, to come here today. And, and we're going to begin this morning with a call to worship, a responsive reading out of the book of Matthew. And these are the words that Jesus said to his followers. He said, uh, enter through the narrow gate. For wide is the gate and broad is the road that leads to destruction, and many enter through it. But small is the gate and narrow is the road that leads to life, and only a few find it. Well, I'm really glad that you guys are here this morning because we have an important topic to talk about today. Uh, it, it's maybe not the happiest topic to talk about, but something that I think is foundational to our relationship with Christ. We're going to be talking about repentance this morning. We're talking about repentance. And, and I believe that in addition to being a foundational uh, piece of how we come to relate to Jesus Christ and how we follow Jesus Christ, that repentance is also uh, one of the things that makes following Jesus difficult, right? One of the things that makes following Jesus difficult, and yet it is essential. Uh, I would argue that without true repentance, we cannot in any way enter through the narrow gate that Jesus was talking about to his followers in this passage from the book of Matthew. Here is a truth that I have figured out and, and that I know is that following Jesus at times is difficult, right? Following Jesus at times is difficult. It's difficult 
not because following him is hard, but it's difficult because following him causes us to examine ourselves and to recognize our own sinful behavior and the sinful things that we do. And then it, for even taking that a step further, Jesus asks us then to do the work, the hard work of not only recognizing those sins, but repenting from those sins and, and, and casting ourselves upon his mercy. And, and that is a very difficult thing to do, though easy in concept as we work through those emotions, it becomes hard. And the Bible tells us that each and every one of us do things that are based on what we want, our own selfishness, and, and rather than what God wants for us. And when we do those things, that's just, the Bible uses the word sin to describe it. And it's that sin, our, our selfishness and the things we do that, that are against God, it's, that, it's those things that separate us from God. It's those things that separate us from God. But the Bible then is a story of how God, through prophets, priests, kings, messengers, attempts to show us that he still loves us even though we have sin, and that he wants to still be with us even though we've separated ourselves from him. And the Bible then gives us a path to come back to God so that we are no longer separated from him, and that path is through Jesus Christ, through belief in Jesus as the Son of God, through asking him for forgiveness from our sin, and through accepting that forgiveness and living a life that acknowledges Jesus as Lord and Savior, and living a life that follows where he leads. You see, our lives as followers of Jesus begin with repentance. So that's what we're going to look at this morning. We're going to take a look at repentance because I believe it's very, very important to understand exactly what it is. And to do that, we're going to be looking at Psalm 130, as Travis mentioned. So uh, if you haven't already, please open your Bibles to Psalm 130. It's right near the middle part of your Bible. And now Psalm 130 is one of the what are called Psalms of Ascent. And what that means is that Way back when, thousands of years ago, when people were traveling to Jerusalem for wherever it was they, from wherever it was they lived in Israel, they would have a bunch of songs that they would regularly sing on the way, right? And this was when they're going to Jerusalem for a feast or, or on a pilgrimage. And these are called songs of ascent because Jerusalem was built on top of a hill. So you had to physically walk uphill to get there. Uh, and also, the journey was supposed to be spiritually uplifting as well. Uh, so these songs of ascent were meant to cause people to reflect on their relationship with God and to help them to see where they needed to make changes in their lives in order to improve their relationship with God. And Psalm 130, I, I think, certainly does that. So let's dive in. Psalm 130, verse 1. It says this, it says, Out of the depths I cry to you, Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to my cry for mercy. So we begin, Psalm 130, with a cry to the Lord. And this is the foundation of each and every one of our relationships with God. It's an acknowledgement of exactly who God is. And exactly who we are, right? It, we cannot turn to God without recognizing the fact that he is God and we simply are not. We simply are not. He is loving and merciful in ways that we simply cannot be. He is powerful and mighty in ways that are not available to us. His intelligence and his wisdom surpasses our own so much so that in comparison we may as well be a rock on the side of the road. Our relationship with God has to begin with an acknowledgement of his sovereignty and our place as a very small part of his creation. He is God and we are not. 
And it says here that we cry out to God from the depths in hope that God hears our voice. And, and when I read this, as I was studying this this week, uh, uh, it, it, it made me wonder exactly what does it mean to cry out from the depths, from the depths. That seems like a very specific place to me. And as I thought about it, I reflected on all the times in my life where I've been especially far from God, mired deeply in my own sin. And, and so I came up with, with this graphic uh, to talk about how even as followers of Jesus, we can get stuck and pulled further from God into our sin and get stuck in these depths. So at the top, right, you see this word event, right? And this is just representative of uh, anything, anything that happens, something that happens to us, something that we may do, something we uh, perceive others to think about us. It, it can really be anything. But whatever the event is, that event triggers an emotional response in us. And from that uh, response, then we do something sinful in order to deal with whatever that event is was. You guys with me so far and making sense? Okay, uh, for example, let's say uh, uh, at the, you get done with your work day and your, bo and your boss calls you into his office and, and tells you that you know, you're no longer employed there, that this was your last day, okay? Let's say that that happened to you. That would be an event, right? That would be an event. Now you could respond to that in any number of different ways, right? Uh, one, of, one response could be that you will go down to the local bar and drink yourself silly, right? That would be a sinful response to that event. And that's the type of thing that we're talking about here. Uh, but here's the thing with sin. Uh, while we are in the midst of our sin, it makes us feel better, right? It, it, it helps us to overcome the trauma of the event. It helps us to deal with the emotions from the event while we're involved in our sinful behavior because it takes away the pain and the anger. Uh, in this example, it would take away the pain and the anger of losing your job for at least a little while. And we see people do this type of thing all the time, don't we? Don't we? Uh, it's all around us. And, and afterwards, there's usually a recognition afterwards that the sinful response that you had uh, was a bad one. And, and, and we often see afterwards, we see regret, and we often see people saying they're sorry, uh, and, 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 and we make promises to ourselves, right? I'm never going to do that again. I'm never going to respond in that sinful way again to anything that happens, right? So we make those promises to ourselves, and we promise to our loved ones that we're not going to do that anymore. And life returns to some sort of normalcy after that point. And we move on from there thinking that we've managed to deal with our sinful behavior, thinking that we've managed to control how we handle the events in our lives. But then, a little bit later down the road, another event happens. And it could be a similar event to what happened earlier. It could be something completely different. And our response would be similar to what it was the last time, let's continuing with our example, something bad happens, we end up down at the bar drinking again. Uh, because we know that the last time we were in this situation, uh, for those few hours we spent drinking at the bar, we felt a little bit better. We felt a little bit better. So the following morning comes along, as it always does. Not only do we have to deal with the fact that we didn't handle ourselves very well the night before, but we remember these promises that we had made to ourselves and to our loved ones. And then the regret and the guilt and the shame that we feel drive us deeper and deeper into our sin. Because all of a sudden now, not only have I responded in a sinful way, but I can't even control myself and I feel terrible about myself because of how I did that, right? And this cycle just keeps going and going and going. And for anyone here who's ever been caught in habitual sin before, you are well aware of how this works, right? And I think that is what the depths are. 
That is the depths of our sin. When we're caught in this cycle, and sometimes we don't even know we're caught in this cycle. Sometimes we know and we ignore it, right? But when we're caught in this cycle, and it could be anything. The sinful behavior could be anything. It doesn't, certainly doesn't have to be drinking. It, it, it could be anything. It could be drugs. It could be sex. It could be pornography. It could be anger. It could be abusing other people. It could be gambling, lying, name it. It, it doesn't matter what it is. It's a sinful behavior that is triggered by events that happen in your life, and it becomes habitual for you, right? And that sin will drag us further and further from God. And I would make the statement, I believe that there really is no way to break out of this cycle of sin on our own, that we simply do not have what it takes to climb out of these depths by ourselves and I think it's when we recognize that when we recognize that we are stuck that we are mired in the depths of our sin that is when as this psalm said we can cry out to God and truly find a pathway out of these depths out of the depths I cry to you Lord Lord hear my voice let your ears be attentive to my cry for mercy. God, I'm stuck, and I'm sorry, and I don't know what to do. And if we truly want to grow in our relationship with Christ, this is where we have to start, out of the depths of our sin. Continues in verse 3, If you, Lord, kept a record of sins, Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness so that we can, with reverence, serve you. So we see here in verses 3 and 4 the acknowledgement that if God were to keep track of all of our sins, then each one of us would be found guilty. As I've already mentioned, none of us on our own can keep ourselves out of the depths of our sin. We need God's help for that. Yet in verse 4 we begin to see a glimmer of hope, don't we? We see that, that there is forgiveness from our sins towards God. The Bible says that forgiveness is available to us when we come to believe in Jesus Christ. And then in verse 4, it says something I find very, very interesting at the end of verse 4. It says that after we are forgiven, then we can serve God. Then we can serve God. And as I look uh, throughout the New Testament at the things that Jesus said and the things that Jesus did and the things that the apostles did and the apostles wrote down, I, can, I come to the conclusion that we come to faith in God through Jesus Christ, then our purpose in life becomes finding a way to serve God comes finding a way to serve God. You know, we were blessed last week for those of us who were here to have Jim Jordan speaking to us. And, and that was kind of the point of his whole message. They, yes, we are called by God. We are called by God as we are called. We are then sent out by God to effect change in the world, to serve others in our community. So then the question becomes, how do we serve God? And and you know, this psalm doesn't specifically answer that question, but verses 5 and 6 give us uh, an obstacle that we probably will have to overcome. Verse 5, I wait for the Lord, my whole being waits, and in his word I put my hope. I wait for the Lord more than the watchmen wait for the morning, more than the watchmen wait for the morning. Once we've acknowledged the position of God and our own sinfulness, once we've cried out to Jesus and received forgiveness, once we've established ourselves on the narrow path of repentance, then we are in a position to serve God. And I think for a lot of us, oftentimes, we want to serve God and we simply don't know how. And, and I think that these verses tell us that sometimes we are going to have to wait 
on God to let us, let us know what it is that he wants us to do. I, I think of, it mentions watchmen twice. I think of these watchmen as they've stood watch all night on the walls of a town. How they're tired, how they're bored, how they're ready for their shift to be over. And yet they wait upon the morning because they realize that their friends and neighbors and family are, members are sleeping soundly behind the walls because of the watch that is being kept. They know that their weight, though not what they want, is worth it. The weight is worth it. So too, as we wait on the Lord and his instructions for our lives, we will find that when he does let us know our path, it will be worth it. You know, I, I think on my own experience, as I was waiting on God to lead me down the path that he had for me in life, and it was a long wait, right? Close to 20 years. And over the course of that 20 years of time, I had many different jobs, and because of that, developed many different skills. And I've realized, since I've been in ministry, that each and every one of the skills that I developed in those different positions, I have used within the church, within ministry, to glorify God. So sometimes he makes us wait, I think, because he needs us to learn some things. And sometimes I think he waits just because we're impatient. Uh, but the key is to that is to know that if you are waiting on God, to realize that the wait is going to be worth it. The wait is going to be worth it. Verse 7, Israel, put your hope in the Lord. For with the Lord is unfailing love, and with him is full redemption. He himself will redeem Israel from all their sins. As we look at these last couple of verses, I want you to take just a minute and put your own name. Put your own name into those verses instead of the word Israel. Put your own name there. Joel, put your hope in the Lord. For with the Lord is unfailing love, and with him is full redemption. He himself will redeem Joel from all of my sin. Put your own name in there. One of the great things about Jesus that I love is that he takes the idea of God and the things that God does, and he makes them personal for each and every one of us. He makes them personal, so we can put our own name there. And we can apply these verses to us. See, in the Old Testament, they could sing these songs of ascents, and they, and they applied to the nation of Israel. But today, because we're followers of Jesus Christ, we can take these promises and apply them to ourselves. Because Christ will redeem us from our sin. Christ will show us unfailing love. Christ offers each one of us, each one of you, full redemption. There's nowhere else that these things are available. They're only available through Christ. And it all starts with repentance. With our ability to recognize that God is God and we are not with our willingness to cry out from the depths of our sin and ask Jesus for forgiveness. And this is not something that we just do once and then we're good, right? This, this is the very foundation of the narrow path upon which Jesus wants us to walk. It requires us to be constantly mindful of our sins and to regularly cry out to God to ask for forgiveness and to be regularly asking God, how can I serve you? And it's difficult to follow Christ in this way because I think for most of us, we would rather sweep our sins under the rug and move on than actually repent from them and deal with 
the consequences. We would rather stay mired in the depths than to cry out from them for forgiveness. Our pride and our selfishness would rather cling to our sins and hold them close to us rather than to let go of them and give them over to God. Because I think for most of us, and here's something we don't think about enough, I think for most of us, we find our comfort in our sin and we find our identity there a lot of the time as well. But right now, this morning, Jesus is here. He's holding out his hand to you. He's saying that I have forgiveness for you, that I have redemption for you, that I have a purpose for you. Jesus has an identity for you that is free from sin and is based on who you really are, which is a fully loved, fully accepted child of God. And if you're listening to me this morning, whether you're here, whether you're watching at home, and you've never experienced that, I want to encourage you from the depths of your sin to cry out to the Lord this morning. Maybe you've, you've been a follower of Jesus for a while, and you've found that you have strayed off of the narrow path. And that's okay. There's nothing to be ashamed of there because it happens to all of us. And God knows that it's happening to us. And Jesus is still here this morning wanting to help you to find your way back to the narrow path. See, repentance is our initial step towards a life with God. But it's also something that we need to do all the time in order to keep our relationship with Christ exactly where he wants it to be. Starting, so over the next uh, few weeks, we're going to be talking more about that. Starting this Wednesday, uh, we enter the season of Lent, which is a season in the church calendar that leads up to Easter. It's a time where for 40 days we focus on our relationships with God. And there's all sorts of different ways to do that, and how you do that is really entirely up to you, but I want to offer you a couple of suggestions this morning. First off, we're going to kick off Lent this year here at KMC with an Ash Wednesday service. So this Wednesday, February 17th at 6.30 p.m., we'll gather here in the sanctuary. We'll focus during this time on our own mortality. We'll focus during this time on our own sinfulness. And together we'll cry out to God as a congregation and ask for his forgiveness. I want to encourage each one of you to come and attend that. We'll also have ashes to impose on people. If you've ever seen people before walking around with ashes on their forehead after Ash Wednesday, we're going to be doing that this, this year. So if that's something that you want, that will be available to you as well. And that's merely a symbol of your repentance and of who you are in Christ. So please join us this Wednesday, 6.30 p.m. right here. Also, over the course of Lent, I found on the YouVersion Bible app. How many here have the YouVersion Bible app? Yeah, quite a few of us. If you don't, look at someone with their hand raised and ask them to help you find it. Uh, I found this reading plan that I thought was pretty good and I think will benefit anyone who goes through it. it it's, it's designed to go through the entire season of Lent, all 46 days. Uh, and it's called Lent with One Voice. Here's the picture of it. Um, so if you go onto the YouVersion app, go on the, on the reading plans and search for Lent, you'll find this picture will be one of the options. Just uh, hit that and it'll take you right into it. And what I want to encourage you to do is that starting this Wednesday, take a couple of minutes of your day and just go through this Bible reading plan. There's verses for every day to read. There's a little devotional for each day, and it really does get into the spirit of what the season of Lent is all about. So I'm asking you guys to join me in that as well, okay? And I know that 
uh, it's easy, right, for us to get stuck in our sins. It's easy for us to get stuck in our sins. But I'm hoping that uh, these tools, this Ash Wednesday service and, and, this, and this one uh, Bible app will help us to recognize our own sinfulness and help us to find a way to get unstuck uh, moving forward. To help us to find strength to cry out to God. Cry out to Him. Because it's only through our repentance that we can ultimately find the freedom of the forgiveness of Jesus Christ. Let me pray for us this morning. Father God, I'm grateful for our time here today. I'm grateful for your presence here in the room. I'm grateful that even as we, we get mired in the depths of our sin, that you still look at us with love and with total acceptance, and that you offer us full redemption. So I want to pray this morning, Lord, for everyone here, for everyone watching online, for everyone uh, within the sound of my voice, Lord. Help us to recognize our sinfulness. Help us to recognize that it is only with you that we can become unstuck. That it is only through you that we can find repentance. Lord, help us to live that way. Bless us this week as we go through our lives. Help us to, to recognize uh, how we can serve you in our forgiveness. Lord, shine your light on our path. Show us which way you would have us go. And help us, as always, to follow you on the narrow path. We ask these blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I pray that you heard from God here this morning on this Psalm Sunday as we explored Psalm 130. I just want to thank you for joining us. If you can like and share this video, head over to our YouTube page and subscribe to Kalamazoo Missionary Church. Also go over to kazumc.org for any uh, tithes and offerings, but other, finding other resources on that webpage as well. We have youth tonight from 5 to 6.30. We have an Ash Wednesday service here at the church. That's the 17th at 6.30. And then next Sunday after service, we're voting on the eldership of James and then also discussing finances if you wanted to join us there. Well, as you leave this morning, I'm going to leave with a little promo video for what's to come in the coming weeks in this Lenten season. And we will see you all next Sunday.